Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to actually create this particular dashboard or report from the scratch. So we have two different teams or two different backgrounds. So here we have the light background and if you click on this particular dark background, it's going to take you to the dark version of the dashboard with the same story. The difference is just the colors. So before we come back here and look at exactly what is going on, let us look at the tags that we are going to get ourselves involved with. Okay, now that you have just taken a good look at this, let us actually look at what the backgrounds would look like. The first version of our background is the light version. Then that is going to look something like this. So I always create my background inside PowerPoint and I'm going to show you how to do just that. The other one is actually the dark version of the background, right? And that is going to be something like this, which I'm going to show you how to create from the scratch. So let's get back to our report. So if you have been following my channel before now, this is a bit different from what I had been creating because we are trying to look at how to actually add more context to our chart in order for we to make the end users to be able to understand what the chart is actually all about without trying to think too much. So the circled one was some kind of adding more context to this particular chart we have here and as well this particular chart and this particular chart. So there are lots of things you need to understand about this particular report I have on my screen and I'm going to show you everything. So I believe you're going to understand it more when we start creating this from the scratch than just showing you around what this is like. So over here, you can actually change, you know, this to like, maybe you want to see top three customers and what you see is the top three customers, top five customers gives you the top five customers and all of that. So if you're ready to actually create this from the scratch, let's do it. So subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not. And if you have, do help me share, leave a comment and let me know what you feel about my contents. Okay, everyone, let us get into work. The very first thing you do is to go grab your data. So already you have it downloaded. Click on Excel workbook and uh, here you find the data you're looking for. Adventure works DW. You can click on open and that will open it in power query for you. Here we go. We have all of those particular, you know, our tables right here. Exclude this particular one. So we're going to get them in. So individually, just click and check all of them. Once you have done that, the next thing specifically to people who are just getting started, you need to understand this particular part. So the very first part you need to understand is this one here called load. Load actually helps you to load it to Power BI. So while this particular transform here takes it to Power Query for you, then cancel means you don't want it to tell. So for now, we're going to actually load this data into Power Query. Click on transform and load. So we now have all the data inside here. So the first table we are going to actually, you know, clean and transform now is our fact table, which is the fact internet sales right here. So first of all, let us have it renamed. I'm going to rename it to fact table here. That is it. So it's optional. You can name it anything you like, or you can name it your transactional table. Depends. So I want to remove some of those columns, like the order date key, we don't need it. The due date key, we don't need it. The ship date key here, we don't actually need all of those I've just listed and orders. If I scroll to this end, you can see lots of them are not really useful to our analysis. So how do you do that? Do you actually individually remove those particular columns you don't need? Like when you right click, you see remove and you see remove other columns. I wouldn't go into detail on what every part of the power query is all about. Instead, we're going to focus on what we need to achieve our own project. So I wouldn't do that. Let's go over to home. In case you are on any other part of the tab here, just click on home. And once you are actually uh, on home, you can see this particular part where we have 
choose column so go ahead and click on it then you see choose columns and you see go to columns so what we're going to use now is choose columns click on it and from here we can choose the columns we want to actually use for our project so for the first time what you do is to select everything from here then you start selecting those columns so we have a product and we want to connect our product to our own transactional table so the next one again is our customer table how do you know all of this if i actually come over here you can see all those particular tables that are available here now they all have keys that are connect that are going to be connected to uh the main table itself so what do we do we select all the keys that are going to be used to actually get these connections so once you've done that we can actually scroll down to see what other keys do we really need so if you look at here now we have the sales directory then we have the key right here so going down we have the unit price we have the quantity right here so the unit price we have here is actually the same thing with the unit price we have in the product table so i would prefer using the product unit price just to create something much more advanced and to show you more ways to actually run some calculations using dax if i scroll down now you can see here we have the ship date we have the due date and we have the other date so for any other thing that is left we're not going to use them but we can always come back here and add more columns if need be so for now i'll click on ok so as you can see we have few columns added here just seven columns and we are okay with this all right so once we have done that let's go to this particular sales directory here and look at it so for the sales territory we don't have much to do we have the header being promoted for us one thing again you need to be very careful with is the data type so let's come back here so if you look at this one now it's actually correct clicking on this particular icon here or this one two and three here shows you that one two and three is a whole number so always try to identify what data types you have in case you want to automatically do it or you want a system or the or park your engine to do it for you you can actually highlight everything using ctrl a then you go to transform when you get to transform you are going to see this particular detect data type right here so click on it it's going to help you to automatically detect data type correctly for every single columns but sometimes it's not perfect you need to study it your own way so if you click on this you see the icons for every single data type and that would definitely make you to know if the data type you have on either of the columns are correct or not but if you're not perfect always make sure you verify so coming to this particular one right now if you look at this for this particular you know row 11 it does not have any associated you know sales directory country and others so you just need to check across if you look at it that we have na and null so for the first time you have to remove this one we don't need it you click on remove once you have done that you just click on either of this one here and remove where we have not available or na that is clean now okay let us move to our product onto our product we have lots of columns we are not going to use as well so we need to get those columns off and just keep the few columns we are going to use for our project how do we do that let's get into it so let's go to home from home we use this choose column as well click on it and now we deselect everything so the first thing we keep is the product key is very important and we locate the product name which is the english version of it so we have different names so we have english so we have spanish we have french so we don't need all of those you know now let's go down and pick the color here then we need the list price and the dealer price so here is the list price here is the dealer price those are the columns we want to use 
then go ahead and click on OK. That has helped you to reduce the column to five. And we have over 600 rows. So don't worry about those particular null you have right here. You don't have to replace anything. So what do we do next? So for this one that they say uh, dealer price is the cost of the product. So we're going to put cost here. For the list price is individual price of our product. So we double click it. We just put price. So if we go over here, we have English product name. So we can just type in product name. That is good. So we have done that. Then the next thing is for you to come right here to actually check if this one is okay as well. Let's verify all of this. And we are not going to need all of those columns. We just have to keep the columns we are going to use. And it's just three columns. Let's get it. Click here. Now we are here. The first column we want to keep is actually the key. So to select everything, keep the key, keep the city, and uh, look for English country. So it's called English country region name. So just go ahead and click on OK. So we can just type in here country. So for the date we have here, we are not going to keep this date. We want to create our own date from the scratch using DAX because our own motive to actually learn this is learn how DAX works and exactly how we can actually use it to answer business questions. So I'm going to delete this particular one from here. So I'm removing this table. So once I click on it, the table will now be removed. So it's gone. So the last thing we have here is the customer table. For the customer table, we need to actually remove some columns. Out of 29 columns, we just want to keep few of the column, like we want to keep six columns. Let's do it. Still on home, we got to choose column here. So we are here, get it off. So we want to keep our customer key, it's very important, the geographic key, is important and uh, customer first name, customer last name. For the middle name, is optional. If you want to keep the middle name, fine. So we can actually, for now, just go with this one. Then for the customer birthday, it's highly important. We want to keep the customer birthday and the customer gender. Now we have all the columns that we want to use. And from this, we can add more columns after all. So. Once we have done that, I think, um, okay, let's add one more. That is total children for every single customers. Let's go ahead and click on OK. So we have reduced this to four, uh, six, seven columns rather, to seven columns right here. And this is all we need. So don't forget to check your data types. For now, they are actually OK. And this is all you need to actually get your data ready. So we'll be coming back here when the need arises but for now we are really cool with this let's get to our power bi environment okay to go to power bi desktop from power query what you do is to close and apply all right we are right here on power bi desktop let's first of all check our relationship by going to this particular modeling area as you can see the system automatically creates our relationship for us, which is absolutely okay. No issue with that. So we're not going to actually spend much time on this. So if you look at it, it has it mapped accordingly right for us. All right, the next thing now is to look at where do we start from? Let us go to the previous one we have created to take a look at it and see what we need to learn first. After you might have actually understand the business need, the next thing is to look at how you can actually present the data in a way that would make the end users to actually, you know, read meaning to your charts. So as you can look at this particular chart we have right here, we have lots of context on this to support the end users to read the chart accordingly. So we're going to create a chart that look just like this. I'm talking about this particular chart we have right here. 
So this particular part is called more context. The more context we add here and right here is this. So now on this particular one, which is this particular line, is the average lines. We want to see which particular age group has actually, you know, uh, made more revenue than the average. You understand? And this particular part here, add under context that tells us, you know, where our revenue or the highest revenue is actually coming from. So this actually gives the end users the ability to actually read the chart without guessing. So in case you've not done something like this before, your question might be, how do I create this? So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can actually have something like this created. So we are going to create two disconnected table. So just click on this particular enter data right here. Once you click on enter data, you see this table, change it to um, all measures. So all measures, then you load this. So we have all measures, you know, inserted for us. So it's not enough. We're going to keep some measures here. To actually keep our measures organized, we need to actually add one. And that one is going to be called, you know, customer or customer's measure. Let us name it customer measures. So over here, we name this one customer measures. Then we just load this. So let us create our first measure. Our first measure is actually going to be the total revenue. So we're going to use all measure to do that. So click on all measure and inside all measure, you can right click and you're going to see where it says new measure right here. Just go ahead and click it. So you can actually click your control key, then the plus to actually zoom closely to look at what you are actually writing. So it's actually simple to create the total revenue. So total revenue, would be this uh, revenue. So what we're going to do right now is to use the sum x. So I wouldn't actually, you know, say much about most of the functions that are that I thought is going to be simple. But for the sake of the new bees that are just coming up, so what you need to know about the sum x is that sum x is actually an iterator that actually scan your table, the two tables you're going to be providing to it or even though if it is one table, line by line and do it, then after all, aggregate it and actually give you the value you are looking forward to seeing. So now the SOMEX is actually looking for a table. If you pay attention to the intelligence right here, what you have here is actually uh, a table. So you need to give it a table. And after the table, you need to give it the expression. And those expression, actually the columns that actually has the value you want to actually, you know, aggregate or, you know, summarize, whatever. Okay, our SOMEX is here. The next thing now for the table is going to be our fact table right here. Then if I have my comma here now, I can actually go for the next one. And the next one is going to be uh, what are those columns? So the column I want to use is actually going to be my uh, quantity or order. So here we have order quantity right here. So this order quantity is actually sitting in the fact or the, uh, the transactional table. So then the next thing that I do is to multiply this by what? I'm going to multiply this by a related table. So this particular function called related is used to actually get value from the one side of our table to the many side of our table. Remember, we have a related table and we have related function, right? They are both table function that actually help you to get value from either of the tables. Okay, doing this now, the table is going to be called product. And what we want from there is actually the price. Here we go. We have the price right in here. So shift enter close. And if I hit my enter key, this has just done the justification for us. So now we have our total revenue. The next thing we do is to actually use the number formatting of our choice. So I'm going to use the dollar, you know, symbol right here. So you can use the Naira, the pounds, or the Ghana city, whatever currency you want to use for it. So you are not mandatory to use what I am using right now. 
Okay. Now that we have this, we have a lot of you know uh DAX to create DAX measure to create, but this is the first one we're gonna go with for we to actually you know take a look at what we have done. Let's just bring it into a card. All right, the result of our first measure is actually here. This is the result of our first measure, and this is actually good. So now that we have this, for we to create what we want, we need to actually add another column into our dashboard. Sorry, into our data on the customer table. Let us go to the customer table, go to the data view or the table view, then click on the customer. So when we click on the customer, you look at this column right here. So we can format it, change the format into normal short format of date. So what we want from here right now is to actually create the age of our customers for we to actually segment them. So we need to know how old our customers you know, are. So how do we do that? To create the age of our customers is actually very simple. We need to just write like one line of code. So to do that now, we need to add a new column. This new column would be inserted into this particular table called dim customer. So with our new column here, I'm going to call it um, customer age. So for my customer age here, I'm going to use a function called date div. Date div actually gives you the difference between two dates. So I'm going to use that date div here. So the date div is looking for the, the first date and the second date. For the first date, I will definitely use my uh, birthday of my customers. So here we have the bed date here. Then for the second one, we need to use a comma to do that. So use a comma and it's asking for the second one. So for the second one, we want this to be dynamic. So for that, we're not going to actually hand code any date right here. Instead, what we're going to do is to use the today function. So today function is dynamic. Every single day, it changes. As soon as you enter a new day, you know, any customer that is actually 15 today, by next year will be 16. That automatically, it's going to be converted for you. So once we are done with that, we can go ahead and close this. Um, do we need to do that? Okay, sorry. We need one more to go. Comma again. And this time around, it's asking you, like, how do you want this? Do you want to know how many days Head of your customers has spent on this planet or hours, minutes, months, quarters, seconds, a week. No, we are not actually interested in any of those intervals. Instead, we want the year. So use the top key to commit it, then go ahead and close, then hit your enter key. This will definitely give you the numbers of years for every single customer. Now we have this. Can you see it now? Very, very simple. The next thing we're going to do right now is to create what I call customer segmentation. So we need to segment those customer into different buckets. So how do we do that? There are so many ways to do this. You might know a better way than me, but let me show you one way out of the many ways I know how to do it. Maybe you don't know this one, then we can share this knowledge together. What you do is to click on new measure, sorry, new column rather. So when you click on your column, you can name this one customer of category or age category. So let us name it age category. So for the age category, so I'm going to use the switch function. You can use the if function, you can use the switch function to do this, whatever. So I'm going to say switch and I'm going to use the one with the true, switch true, switch only if it is true then have my comma right here. So the first value now is going to be this. So I'll be using the AND function as well. So you can do this without the AND function, but I'm going to use the AND function. So using the AND function right now, remember we have a customer you know, age created. So I'm going to say customer age, which is this one. So we can do without the table name and it's still going to work. How do we do that? If I actually move right here, I can actually get this particular table name off and only have the uh, column. 
But sometimes when you do this, it will feel like maybe you are using a measure. So you might want to have the table name right in here. So keeping the table name alongside with this one is optional, but I love to have my work very clean. So I'll go with this one. So what I'm going to do is that if this particular customer age is actually greater or equals zero, you get it because I'm going to segment this and uh, have the age being grouped. So what I want is if it is um, greater or equal to zero and the second logical one is that it's going to be the same customer age here i told you i wouldn't like to keep the table name so i'm going to actually get this off so this time around i want to use less than so it's less than or equal to 10. then if that is the case i'm going to close my and i have just some kind of gotten that done then I'm going to put my comma right here. So the result I want right now is going to be those customers are going to be from 0 to 10. So you have to put that inside a double quotation right here, 0 to 10. Then you close it. Then you hit your comma. So we have gotten the first value in. So if I were to stop writing this all over again, we can definitely copy this from here. Control C, copy it, and we paste it all over again. So let me paste this one. Control Shift Enter, I paste. Control Shift Enter again, I paste. So as you can see, I have seven lines of code right here. The highlighted part here is actually seven. Then the last one is gonna be without, you know, a comma because that is the last one. Okay, I think we're gonna have a comma right here for a purpose, so let us put a comma right there. So what we're gonna do right now is to change the values we have here. So right here, I'm gonna use 10. So if you look at it, I'm actually on 10, and 10 is the last number right here. And for now, I'm gonna use 20 over here. So I'm gonna put two, that is 20. Then I'm gonna use that same 20 over here. As you can see, you can work the maths, you'll see that we're gonna, we're actually creating interval between them then over here is going to be 30 then the 30 will come down to this particular part here then right here is going to be 40 so then we're going to do the 40 over here and uh, we do 50 here 50 here then we can do the same 50 over here while we do 60 over here then we're going to do 60 over here then now we do 70 over here so for the result we are going to display on the screen when all of those conditions are met so will be this one here so if it is actually greater than or equal to 10 and less than or equal to 20 so what we want is going to be 11 to 20. So 11 to 20. So I'm going to actually tell you why I did that. So let me quickly explain that to you. So if you look at this particular part right here, it says 0 to 10. So once this particular code runs from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and uh, 10. It stopped at 10. So it starts running from 11 again. That is why we have it 11 to 20, and it stopped at 20. And that is on and on. So it's something that you can actually sit down and devise how I actually did it. So the next one is going to be 21 to 30. 21 to 30 right here. So this one is going to be 31 to 40. So 31 to 40. Then 61 to 70. So you look at that. So we have the last line. So if any of these are not the case, shift, enter. The last one now is going to be um, inside double quotation over 70. You get it now over 70 or 70 plus 
depends on what you really want. So once we are done with this, shift, enter, we can now close this and we've closed our switch. So very simple, very easy. I told you that there are so many ways to do this, but I just want to show you this. So now once you've done, you hit the enter key and commit it. And right now we have a new column that actually segment our customers for us. So if I click over here now, so what we see is that we have 21 to 30, you know, 61 to 70 as the max. So we don't have zero to 10. So the question you might be asking, if we don't have this, or let me do a normal highlight for you. So the question you might have in mind is this, if you do not have uh, this particular tool, and uh, we don't have this one why do we have them here so one thing is this if you don't have any customer within this particular two age buckets now uh, then in the future you might have customers that will be within this particular you know range so having this and this here will definitely make you to have the right analysis when that time comes you get it so that was why we included this right in it so we can click on escape key already. We've gotten what we want. So we are ready to actually go right here and take a look at how we can actually start using this to actually create some inside. All right, we are here. We have a card here. So we're not going to use this card. Instead, what we're going to use is this particular, you know, close tab column chart right here. So clicking on the close tab column chart, the very first thing I'm going to do is to bring in that particular age category in here. So the age category now went to our X axis and for the Y axis, what we want to get inside our Y axis is actually that particular measure we created the other time. And that is going to be this total revenue. So as you can see, we have our total revenue this way. So you might want to sort this particular chart by the X axis. So how do you do that? You click over here and you go to sort. And once you get into that, you can sort, you know, uh, by the age category here. So it has been sorted for you. So we're starting from the highest value to the lowest value. So clicking on it again, we can decide to go to sort again and we sort you know, ascending. And now it's from the lowest, you know, age group, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, down to the max one. This is what you do. Okay, once we have gotten this, the next thing again is for you to look at how we can actually add that particular, you know, conditional, this, this is the conditional formatting we have and the average line we have to add more context to this particular chart. So it is time for we to use uh, another, you know, our disconnected table we created, which is the customer measures right here to create our next measure. So go to this particular table tools and you click on new measure. So when you're in new measure, that will definitely, uh, definitely create a measure for you. And uh, we can name our measure now to average revenue by our uh, age group. So I'm going to do average. So AVG for average revenue so inside inside bracket i want to put age you know age group here so i'll close this then is equals okay what am i gonna do we're gonna actually average our revenue by the x axis which is age group. So the function to be used for that is going to be the average X. So using the average X, we want to average. We don't want to average for individual age groups. So we want to average for all of the age groups we have. And we need to remove filter. The only functions that can do that for us is the all function. So with the all function, we're going to tell it that, you know what? I want you to remove filter from uh, age group for me so customer age okay it's called customer age category so you can call it customer age group so i will remove filter from this then go ahead and close this and now hit your comma then the next thing is the expression the expression is going to be the 
only merger we've ever created, which is this particular one right here, total revenue. So once you've done that, shift, enter, you go ahead and actually close. So I don't want to confuse you. If you look at what we have done right here, so we type in here. So we said we have average, you know, uh, revenue. And for that average revenue, we actually did this particular average X. This average X is an iterator that goes into this particular, you know, uh, dim customer table and actually navigate into the column where we have our average uh, age, age, age category or uh, the age group into and line by line and do that work. But we don't want it to actually average this, average this, average this. We want to average all of them so that we can have an average revenue for all our customers. That was all we did. Okay. Then once we have done that, we can hit the enter key to create the average line now. So let us quickly have this formatted. So use the dollar pound, uh, the dollar sign right here, and always take off the extra decimal you might have on it. Zero here onto auto. We don't want that. So we we'll take auto off and we'll put zero. Okay, for we to see what we have done, the effect of it right now, we need to change the kind of chart we are actually using right now. So how do we do that? So click on this and let us use this particular, you know, line and stacked column chart instead. So with the line and stacked column chart, we can come over here now and we go into the line Y axis here. So when you click on that, you go to customer and you pick the average here. So can you see that is the average? Very good. Although this is not a chart we're going to use. I'm just trying to show you what this looks like because automatically Power BI is able to detect the average of your value irrespective of the dimension you're using. In that case, let us bring this down right here. So I will definitely go over to pick this particular closed start column chart again. So once I pick that, I can actually resize it. So once I've done that, I will go for my uh, customer. So let us get our age category in. So once we've got our age category in, let's go to all measures and get in our total revenue. So now we have something similar to this. So what are we trying to derive from this? I'm trying to show you the difference between the one we have calculated and the one that the system or Power BI would automatically, automatically generate for you. So now we can click on this now and let's go all the way down. So once we get down here, you can see where we have reference line. So click on the reference line and let's scroll all the way down again. And then now add line. So once you click on add line, you can say choose a type. So if you click on choose a type, you can actually say add average line. Then system automatically adds the average line for you, just like what we have right here. So if you look at it right now, you can actually go over to the three dots here. And from three dots, we can go to the sorting. We sort by category. So we can come back here and uh, we go to the sorting again, we can do ascending and we have something exactly like this one. So we have it. The difference between this particular one and this one is that this one is dotted line and we don't need to actually create a chart that would add extra Y axis before we can get this. So one thing I love about the one that this particular system generated is that you can actually add the data label, which is not really possible on this one. I don't know if you can do that yourself and see if that is possible. So what we do now is to scroll all the way down. So once we scroll down, we can add the tally bell inside here. And that is just for the line chart alone that we have or the trend line we have for the average. So once we have done that, we can open it up, open it up to format it. So right now it's asking us where do we want to have this? So we have this on the left hand corner we can decide to say, okay, you know what? Just push this to the right-hand corner for me. 
And the next thing is actually style. So if you click on style, you can now see why it says use the name. And once we click on the name, it only add average line one for you. So we don't want that. We want both the name and the what and the value. So we can use, you know, our bot. So clicking on bot, we have the default average line one with the value that we have. So what we can do is to actually scroll all the way up again. And uh, we need to edit this. You can see a pen icon there. Go ahead and click it. So once you have it clicked, you can name this one to average just with this. Can you see? So this is what you can do. Can you see now? So if I hover over this one here, look at the value we have. It's the same value that we have the one we generated using Power BI. Can you see that? Very, very interesting, right? So with this, we're going to add more context. Let me take you back to the finished one and for you to look at what I'm talking about. So over here, as you can see, we have already, you know, gotten this particular part achieved. So the last thing we don't have here is this particular color here. That is the same thing and this color. And if you need to know, this color respond to your filter. So if this is actually above this line, you're going to have this color. If this particular one is below this line, you're going to have this particular color right here. And that is what it is. And we need to actually add more context. So this context says 74% of revenue is attributed to the yellow bars, primarily led by the 41 to 50 each group surpassing the average revenue line. Very interesting. So how do we add this context? Before we add this context, let us talk about this particular color and this color we have right here. This is not a default color in Power BI. Instead, we're going to use measure to actually have this color the way it is. Let's get it. So in that case, we don't need the line and stacked column chart right here. So once Power BI can generate the same thing and it will be even much more easier. Let us get it away from here. So what we're go, going to do now is to click on this particular data. And now we click on the customer measure. Inside the customer measure, we need to create a new measure right here. So I'm going to click on measure. So try to remember the average, you know, our revenue by customer age group we've calculated that we remove filter from. So we're going to use that right here right now. So what I'm going to do is to just say um, conditional formatting. So CF for conditional formatting. And I'm going to do age uh, group right here. So putting my equals sign. The next thing I'm going to do is to actually, you know, um, use an if condition to do this. So what I'm going to do right now is to say if, and if what? If total revenue, which is this particular total revenue here, is actually greater than, so let us look at that. So if it is greater than the average revenue. So remember this average revenue? That was the last measure we created. So if it is greater, we want to see one. Otherwise, we want to see zero. Then that is all we need to do. Shift, hit the enter key, then close and now hit enter. So if you want to see this in reality, so what you can do now is to actually click on this to actually have it on a card to see what results you are going to have. So here we go. So because the total revenue is above the average, we have this. But we want this to actually look good on a conditional formatting aspect. So we want to use it on a conditional formatting environment. So what we can do now is to click on this. So first of all, you need to know about color before we definitely start to do this. What color do you want to use for your dashboard is absolutely important for you to know that. So from the color, we can pick the colors for our chat and the color for highlights and all of that. On this website called color.adobe.com so you can actually get you know any color of your choice you can even make a search or mix the color you really want so make sure if you're on the site you click on explore and come over to the bar here so if i put in like uh, 
yellow, black now. So, and I hit my enter key, it's gonna actually search and create a color palette for me that actually, you know, correlate with yellow and black for me. So if I scroll down, you can see the color I have right here. But this is where you can come and choose any color you want, specifically if you are not really good at colors, right? So already I have the color for you. If you wanna take a look at that, so you have it on your own download file. So this is the color of my first dashboard and color of my second dashboard, the dark one and the light one, right? So this is what we're going to use. So now, how do you make use of this? Just click on this one, for example, and come over to here if you're on PowerPoint, so click on this. Then from there, you scroll down, you see where it says more colors. So once you have that, you can come here, you see the hex code, then you control A to copy the hex code. In case you are using a lower version of PowerPoint, what you can do is to, you might not have the hex code, then you can use the RGB right here. The numbers is what you're gonna copy. I'm gonna show you how to enter them as well. So let's go back to our Power BI. So we are right on Power BI right now. So on the Power BI, make sure you have this one clicked on. So once you click on your own chart that you wanna format, so go to the formats, you know, part here, and what you need to do is to go down, you see where it says column. So on that column, what you can do is to actually go ahead and change any color you want to use here. Can you see? This is the default color we have, but if you have to use conditional formatting to condition how the color looks like, then you need to use the FX right here. So clicking on the FX, so it's gonna open this for us. Then now what we can do is to actually click right to this row and change it to field value. So when we change it to field value, we go over to here, then we click on the customer, you know, measure, and we now see the conditional format, CF age group here. Then we click on it. Uh, um, okay, sorry, we need to use gradient. Let's go with the gradient, not the field value. So use the gradient. So when you use the gradient, we actually go ahead and select the conditional format here. So once we have it selected, then for the highest value, what do you want to use? Remember, we have copied a color code from PowerPoint. So I'm going to come over here and click on it, then go to more colors here. So when we get to more colors, you can see where we have the hex code right in. So make sure you paste your hex code at the right part, right? Your hex code is here. So if you don't have the hex code, you might have the RGB. Here is the R, the G, and the B. You paste the, you know, our respective numbers on the boxes you have right. So once you have done that, the next thing is for we to place our color right here. So we have placed the color for the highest value. So if we go back to PowerPoint right now, so the next we're gonna do is to get this particular color for the lowest value. So that is not actually above or exact the average value we have. So we go over here and we click on colors, then we go over to custom, we click here and control A, we copy this and we have to get back to Power BI. So inside Power BI now for the lowest value now we click on this and uh, we click over more and we paste it in here. And once we step out from here and click on OK, let's see what we're going to have now. So can you see it? That is good. So we have this right. The next thing we're going to do is to make sure our chart is very well clean. So we're not going to have anything like um, the chart title. I'm going to take it off and let's come to the X axis right here. For the X axis, I don't want the title for the X axis, but I want to actually have the axis text to be bold. Then I click on the bold. Then for the Y axis, I don't want to do, keep the Y axis at all. So what I'm going to do is to actually get off the Y axis totally. So click on the x-axis, close it, y-axis. So we need to actually turn off the title first. Once we have done that, the next thing we do is to turn off the axis totally. That is very interesting. Then the next thing we're going to do right now is that for we to keep this particular legend right here, that shows zero is low and the one is high, it doesn't really help our end users. What do we need to do? We can get them off by make sure you turn off the legend. Okay, now that is okay. What about the line? You can look at the line color is not actually matching our actual color right here. So what do we do? So we click, just scroll down 
to where can we do that scroll down where we have the reference line then you scroll down to the line aspect here now here we have the line so we can choose to use a something dark gray color so this is perfect then what about the text of the value we are displaying on the line chart so we need to actually make sure we match that accordingly as well so how do we go about that so let's turn on the reference uh, reference line so we go down so we have the data label we scroll we have the value in this color so we can choose to use something like this this is perfect i love it this way nicely done as you can see we are almost done from here the next thing we're going to do right now is that we want to actually activate you know our main data label which is this particular one right here can you see that so that actually supports what we want to display so after we have this i can just put this one right here for the time being then the next thing we need to do right now is to make sure we create another context that would definitely support this particular chart to tell the story we wanted to tell and what is that we need to actually add a new what a new measure inside our customer you no know, measures so i'm going to click new measure so please don't forget to like and leave a comment all of that will definitely help my channel to grow and uh, share to your friends in case they need to learn about spa bi so the very first we're going to do is to actually add um, the name so i'm going to say uh average so i always love to use the short form you know um let's do caption average caption average caption so now sometime i would love to keep a shorter you know um measure name but over here what i'm going to do in case somebody opens this for the person to understand what is actually going on i will definitely add a comment right here to tell the person what this is actually all about so you can see what i'm typing in so revenue of age group above and uh, below average so this is the revenue of age group above or below average caption so here we go we have this okay we can start writing this for the first time the very first thing we're going to do is to actually you know create a variable to do this so you're going to learn a lot from here just let us go slowly so i'll type in here sorry variable so what the function of this variable is to actually get the average revenue by age group so which is gonna be average revenue age group so if you want to actually keep space make sure you use underscore so I always love to use, you know, underscore at the beginning because it would be very easy for me to actually call back my variables when I need to actually reference them within this particular measure. So once I've done that, put my equal sign, shift, enter. Now what I'm going to do right now is to use the average X. You know what we've done before. So we have so using the average X here. So you can use the um, summarize. Instead of the all function, you can use the summarize, you know, our function over here. So the summarize function is just like the all function is looking for a table and now our table is actually you know our customer so customer here dim customer and when i put my comma right now it's looking for a column you know a column is going to be age the age group here that is the column we're going to put right there so once we've done that we can close this and that is all for that so now we have given it our table the next thing is actually the expression the expression is actually we want to average our previous one which is this particular one here 
then we have this. So, so let us look at the functionality of this particular variable we have right here. So this variable is actually calculating the average revenue for different age group based on the age category uh, column in the dimensional table called dim customer. So that is what this is actually doing. So we are not done yet. Uh, uh, we have more. So here we're going to add another variable. So I will call this one revenue underscore revenue rather underscore revenue filtered table okay let's see what is the function of this one so the reason why we are doing this is that we want to actually create a percentage of you know the top uh age category or age group that has surpassed sees the average revenue set you understand so we want to see what is the percentage of that particular age group that is why we are doing this and to do that right now we're going to do something else we're going to iterate through uh, a table that we are going to create virtually and what we're going to do what we're going to need to do that is actually using the sum x as an iterator so using the sum x is the sum x is actually looking for what looking for a table and the table right now we're going to use the filter function so using the filter function, the filter function will take the summarize, you know, function here. So inside the summarize function, as you can see, the summarize function, it will be looking for a table. And the table right now is going to be deemed customer. So comma, and uh, for the column, the column will be the age. So we want the um, age category here, the age category. Then we close and we hit our comma. So once we have done that, we are going to say, okay, you know what? Uh, for the expression, shift, enter to properly indent it. We want to say total revenue, total revenue greater than that of um, average. That is the previous measure of created. So for we to actually access the previous measure of created with ease, just having an underscore here, would give you sorry a uh, variable rather not merge a variable so we give you the variable and we have the variable here so once we have done this shift enter we we'll close and once we hit our comma our expression right now is going to be this very total revenue here our very our measure so shift enter then we we'll close so let us highlight this particular part here so as you can see what this particular part does is to only calculate for the age group that surpasses the total revenue you understand it's not actually calculating the whole total revenue that is not what it is it's only calculating for that age group if we have zero to ten seven to five as an instance twenty to 30 so if only 20 to 30 surpasses the total the, the the average revenue then it's only calculating for this particular average revenue you know that is what we are only having it's only calculating for this one that surpasses the average revenue so it's returning the total revenue for that so we are doing this because we want to create a percentage in case you're actually lost somewhere don't worry you will get it after all so that is all you just need to know so let us proceed from here so as you can see, we have gotten the total revenue for the age, the, the top, the age group with the highest, you know, um, revenue that is higher than the average. So we need to actually know which particular age group is that. So we're going to use the variable again. And this time around, this variable will be top age group, right? So top, uh, don't forget your underscore, top age group equals so for we to do that is very simple we want to extract just one age group and that one age group has a condition that age group must actually have the highest revenue so what we can do we can use the top end function to do that 
So for the top end function, we are going to tell the top end function that we need just one single age group. So you get that now. So with that, we are looking for a table. And for we to get that table, we're going to use a function called distinct. So the distinct function here is actually going to be asking for a column. And this column now, we're going to provide a column called our age category here. So for the age category, we close this and we hit our comma. So now it says order by expression. For the order by expression, we need to give it the total revenue here. So how do we want to actually, you know, uh, what do I say? How do we actually rank this? Do we want the smallest value or the highest value? So actually ascend, uh, descending is what we want. So we're descending is going to return the highest value, the age category or age group with the highest value, comma. So we are going to do one more thing. So we want to say comma and this order by second expression here, shift enter to go into a new line. So we are doing this for the age category. The reason for that is that if two or three age categories have the same values, we want to return just one, then we go each category here and this one we do this uh, we do ascending instead of descending shift enter we go ahead and close this so you might want to like we have not been seeing the result that those particular variable would return so what do we do shift enter let us look at if we return eight out of them so i'm going to return my you know total uh top age group here so the top age group I will have it return. Then I want to see what the result would look like in the card. So we have it. Let's go and push this into a card. So you can see 41 to 50. So let us look at it here. So you can see 31 to 40 is 75 million. 76 million for 41 to 50 which made it the highest but this particular 51 to 60 is still having 76 but let us hover over it this is 75 million 678,687 us dollars now if you hover over this this gives you 76 not 75 so this one is working based on approximation so you can see the difference so the highest one is coming from here then the next thing you might want to get is okay what if we go ahead and return another variable we've created so what can we do let's come over here and if i put my underscore here i see all my variable let us return this particular variable we'll call the revenue filter table so here we go so let us go ahead and look at what would be the result we're going to find so the result is this. This is the result we have. So your question might be this. What is this value to, to 7.28 million? What is the value? Let me show you what the value is. So the value here is actually coming from this, this, and uh, this. So one, two, three added together is actually giving us this. So we only call, you only use this one to calculate for where our revenue surpasses the average line. That is exactly what we have done, which means it exclude this, I exclude this one here because they are not actually in the list of the age group or age bucket that surpasses the average line. You get it now. Okay, let us look at the last one before we proceed. So let's click here. So we click here now. That will definitely be we showing average revenue age group. So try to look at what will be the result before you definitely proceed. Let's see what this would be like 
So this is what we have. So without me even saying anything, you must have known what this is like. So now this particular value you have right here is actually equal to the value we produced right here on the average line. That is it, 61.418 million US dollars is what it is that we have right here. That is what that particular measure is doing. So you might be asking, why are we doing all this? We are doing all this just to add a context to our chart. So let's proceed over to the main measure. So if I scroll down, we don't actually need any of these for now. So we take them off. So where are we now is that we want to actually create a variable and this variable is going to some kind of calculate revenue for only the top age group. Okay, so now we do variable. So underscore revenue top age group. So equals shift enter. So right now to do that, we can use the calculate function over here. Inside the calculate function, what we're going to do, we are going to use the total revenue. So this is our total revenue here. That is the measure. So if I put my comma right now, let's see what it is. When I put my comma, it's asking me for filter. That filter right now would be a particular variable we have right here. And that variable is top age group. Shift, enter, and we're closed. So remember, so let us just display this. Then I'm going to explain this to you. So if I come here and say return now, so this return underscore here, we return uh, revenue top age group here. So let's see what it's going to give to us. This is going to be for just one single age group. And this single age group is the age group or the age category that actually surpasses the average line. So look at it, 76.19. And that is going to be this one. Can you see? So 76.18 is what you are seeing, but that five is going to be approximated to eight and it's going to be nine. If you can actually look at that over, you know, over here. So when you approximate this particular five here to eight, it gives you nine and you have that. That is what we have done. So we are still actually going somewhere. Let's go back and uh, keep going. So if I take this off now, the next thing I'm going to do right now is to actually create my result. What do I really want with all of this? Okay, I'll create a new variable. Inside this new variable, I'll call it underscore result. Underscore result equals. So for the result, all I want is to actually get a percentage. So I'm going to use a divide. Divide. And inside my division, I'm going to use underscore filtered. Uh, revenue filtered, right? Oh, sorry. I think you have a table called a table. Yeah. Revenue filter table here, comma, shift, enter. Then we're going to divide that by the total revenue. That is going to be our main measure. The measure is not actually a variable here, but just a measure outside here. Shift, enter, we close. So this would give us the percentage. So if you want to look at this, please, you can take a look at it. Just do, you know, return and it will return the percentage that is peculiar to it. Okay, we've come this far. We want to actually go straight to the point and actually show what we want to show on the screen right here. And that is where we have to actually type in return. And in our return, what we actually want is to actually create a string with the concatenation of our values and our percentages. So remember, there will be a lot of work here. So let's do this. Okay, over here, what I'm going to do is to first of all, use a format. You can on the screen, you can see what you are trying to achieve. So if I put my format here, inside the format, I want my result to be in a percentage. Ordinarily, if I just put my result here without format, what I will have 
is going to be this. So let's just look at it. Results. And uh, I hit my enter key. I want to see what we are going to have without we formatting it into a percentage. So let us look at that. So let's go over here. So we have this 0 0.7, which doesn't really make any sense as a percentage for now. So for we to convert this to a percentage, it would be very easy for us when we click over here and actually convert it to a percentage. That is great. So it works because we have not actually some kind of added any string on it. So it's working right now. It gives us what we want. But what happens when we actually scroll down and actually say, okay, this particular 74% that we have, so we want to concatenate something else to it. And to concatenate is to use the ampersand here. So to add a text inside of a quotation, once you have it, you have the space bar to give a space. So you type off, like let's say 74%. We're going to say 74% of, you know, uh, revenue. Um, is attributed to the yellow so whatever color you use to highlight anyone that surpasses the average line so you can give the color right here so bars comma primarily led by d so we are done so I want to close this. I'm going to give a space to close this and I'll close this right here. You get it now. So once I have it closed, I'm not done yet. So for me not to some kind of make it not really, um, you know, well formatted, I'm going, to, I'm going to hold my shift key, enter, then that will go into a next line for me. So I would like to come out of it. I want to set all my text right here. Okay. I think now I'll do under ampersand to concatenate something different. This time around, I want to concatenate the age group that has the highest, you know, uh, value when it comes to surpassing the average line. So I will do underscore here. So when I do the underscore, I will go for top age group. So my top age group is here. So inside here, I want to write under text space. So let's say is 41 to 50 so 41 to 50 i'm gonna put age group age group so passing the average revenue line i would like to pull those in capital letter average revenue line then i close this that is all i want so if i hit my enter right now so you want to see that that particular formatting we did the other time is gone let us look at it so as you can see it has returned very huge number to us do you see that now this is huge so what can we do to actually make sure we bypass this to have the right formatting for our percentage. All we need to do is to come over here. Right now, we scroll all the way down. So we use the format function here. Format. So when we use the format function, we can actually have a comma here after our variable. Then for the format, you can see, pay attention to the intelligence under the format here. Inside of a quotation, we want to put zero point zero here so with 0, 0.0 you have a percentage already so you can put a percentage you know sign here you close this and you close your format then let us hit our enter key and look at it we should have what we want actually we have it so if you don't want to have a decimal place right on it what you can do Maybe you might want to do some other changes. So I think we have another way to do it. Let's come over here. So I can decide to remove 
this. I'll just do 0%. Let's see what the result would look like. So let's see that. So with 0%, we have 74% without we having that extra decimal. And another way to have the same thing done is to use the hash key. So now we can actually come over here. Instead of having zero here, I'm going to have the hash point hash and hit my enter key. It will still give me the same result. No difference. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Can you see it now? We have the same result. Okay. Um, I think we are having dot. So that dot for we to get that dot off there is for we to actually remove the last one. So let's see what this will give us. So just try to play around and see what this would look like. I believe it's going to help you. So can you see that dot is gone? So we have 74%. Is that that you are using zero or you're using the hash? Anyone you want to use. So you are free to do, you know, use any one of your choice. So once we have gotten this done, the next thing we have to do right now is to actually format this. So for we to format this now, I'm going to click on my format here. Then I go to my color, uh, I think it's call out value. So I'm going to use size 12. So I have something like this. So I'm going to take off the caption, right? Take off the caption. Then we can shrink this. So I'm going to have it above here. So if you look at it, we have a border and um, we, we have a white, you know, background on it. So we come over here to turn it off totally. So it's gone. So this add a little, you know, uh, context to what we are doing. You understand? So this supports our chat to be some kind of readable. So the readability is the key. That is what we are actually looking forward to right here. So we have this. So the next we're going to do right now is that this does not really say much about this particular you know, chart we have right here. What we need to do is to some kind of go over to uh, insert. So click on insert and click on the text box. So once we click on the text box, the next thing we're going to do right now is to actually, you know, have our title ourselves. So our title should be revenue uh, segmented by age group. By age buckets or group. That is it. So once we have done that, we have to some kind of control A to highlight the content inside it. Come over here to put this on 14. So let us select a bold font. So I'm going to go with this particular one that says bold on it. So we have this. So right away, I would love to some kind of format this with the same color I have right here. So what can I do if I can't remember the color? It's always simple to get a color back. So click on it and uh, go over to where you did the formatting under these particular columns. And uh, the next thing you do is to click on the FX here. Then you click on this one, click on more colors. You can copy the color code from here. Then cancel, you go over here and use it. So what I'm going to do right now is that I want to format this particular one on a separate color. So I click over here, I click on this and I choose to go and uh, have the color here. So now I have the color. Rightly, I select this one to change the color. So let's say I'm going to use this color here. So now I have something like this. I can just some kind of minimize it. And I have it above this one. So the problem I may, I'm going to have is when I have it here, I need to go ahead and turn off the background. Otherwise, it won't allow the caption to show. So this is what it is. So now please practicalize, just, just, just practice this one while we actually see how we can come up with other ones. So this is a dark version of it. Very great.
You understand? No difference. We have given you a top-notch dashboard right here. So if you actually find value on this particular part of the our you know, report, go ahead and actually hit the like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about my YouTube channel. So support me by actually sharing this content to other people on your social media. So it's very, very important. and It's going to help this particular channel to grow. So thank you. See you in the next one.